This is Jay Cutler, one of the most celebrated bodybuilders of all time. He is a four-time Mr. Olympia champion. And today we are going to take an in-depth look at his respective bodybuilding career, including his rise to prominence in 2006 as Mr. Olympia champion. And then, of course, the fall of Jay Cutler in 2008, where he lost his Mr. Olympia title, and then becoming the first and only man ever in bodybuilding history to win the title back after losing it. So I guess it is, in fact, the rise and fall, and then rise back up of Jay Cutler. So sit back, relax, pop your popcorn, and maybe even have a soda. Make sure it's diet soda, though. Remember, those abs. And let's take a look at Jay Cutler's entire career. And this is him back when he was a mere teenager. Look at that, guys. He's about to chow down on that great big cake, I'm sure. He comes from, you know, the salt of the earth type people. I believe his family had a, a concrete business. So I'm sure if not for bodybuilding, that's probably what he would have ended up doing for a career. But lucky for him and us as fans, he discovered weights and by the age of 16... I mean, my goodness, he had began to realize his potential to actually someday become a professional bodybuilder. And by 1993, Jay Cutler, he was all set to compete. And that he did at that year's Teen Nationals. He actually won. He placed first in his weight class. But you know what? He ended up losing in the overall to the light heavyweight guy, the light heavyweight champion that year. And look who it is, guys. Funny little backstory there. Branch Warren defeated Jay Cutler back in 1993. Jay Cutler seemingly re-emerged on the bodybuilding stage in 1996. And he was, what, 30 pounds heavier? And he looked like he was a lot sharper. So this was the Jay Cutler that we know and love. I mean, this is incredible development in just three short years. Jay would end up taking first in his class at the NPC Nationals that year, and it was on his way to the IFBB and the pro stage of bodybuilding. He took a year off in 97, emerged back on the stage in 1998 at that year's Night of Champions. He was thrown right in with the Lions. I mean, the 98 Night of Champions... Look at this lineup. I mean, you had Ronnie Coleman, Kevin Lavroni, Mike Matarazzo. Are you kidding me? Talk about young hungry lions. All kinds of other names too, guys. Look at this. You had Ernie Taylor, Marcus Rule, Brian Buchanan, even Marco Savolainen. Look at those famous arms. But yeah, Jay ended up placing 12th, but that was his pro debut. The following year, 1999, Jay would make a huge splash at that year's Arnold Classic with a fourth place finish. And then, at the Iron Man, the 99 Iron Man, Jay probably brought his best look to date. He got a, a third place finish. Of course, Milo Sarsev placed second, and Chris Cormier won that event. But yeah, Jay looked tremendous here, guys. But if I'm not mistaken, I detect maybe a slight bit of gyno, or as I like to call it, a Fig Newton. Jay would also make his Mr. Olympia debut in 1999. Definitely lost in the pack. He placed 15th. But you know what? I guess it's good to get your debut over with. But it's a darn shame Jay Cutler didn't get a second look that year. Because personally, I think Jay looked tremendous at the 1999 Mr. Olympia. Now, 2000 was a breakout year for Jay Cutler, and a lot of people don't realize this. Jay would play second to Ronnie King Coleman at the 2000 English Grand Prix, or the British Grand Prix, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, this was the first time that he was actually compared side by side with Ronnie King Coleman, and he compared very well. And following that tremendous second place finish, Jay would take his first big win at the 2000 Night of Champions, and he looked awesome, guys. He defeated some legendary bodybuilders that night, too. So definitely, this was Jay Cutler's breakout year. A couple of events right there that just 
put him on the map. And if you look closely, you can see Kevin Lavroni in the background playing with his band. So what happened to Jay Cutler at the 2000 Mr. Olympia? I'll tell you what happened. I guess he didn't prep that hard for it. He didn't realize here he didn't think that he was going to place that high. He actually got 8th, which was good for Jay at that time, but considering he lost to Marcus Rule, Lee Priest, Nasser Al-Sambadi, definitely a not a good version of Nasser either. Jay, if he had been in condition, probably would have defeated all of those guys. Jay would finish up the year with another second place finish, second to Ronnie King Coleman once again at the 2000 and, uh, or the just the 2000 World Pro Championships. And this is not actually a picture from that event for you acute observers. The 2001 Mr. Olympia event all the stars were aligned for Jay Cutler. You know those days when you wake up and you just, you look better than you usually look. That was one of those days for Jay Cutler. I am talking thin skin, just like glass. Jay Cutler could not have looked any better with the body that he had. I mean, this guy nailed it. And when he walked out on stage, there was a off Ronnie King Coleman, definitely not himself, was not looking 100%. So in comparison, this should have been an easy win for Jay Cutler. But at the end of the day, as you guys probably know, if you're into your history of bodybuilding, you know that Jay Cutler placed second to Ronnie Coleman, and many people still to this very day believe that Jay Cutler was robbed of that title. 2002 was an interesting year for Jay. He competed exclusively for the Arnold Classic event. He won, of course. I mean, with no Ronnie King Coleman hanging around. And the interesting thing is, Jay elected not to compete at the 2002 Olympia, and I believe it had something to do with him being disqualified from even his second place finish at the 01 Olympia? Or am I... Am I just imagining that? I definitely think he was disqualified from the, the record books, but I think he was reinstated after that. But either which way, by 2003, things, I think, were back to normal. Jay, as usual, he won the Arnold Classic event for the second time, so kudos to him. But he also won the Ironman Pro, and he would also go on to win the Grand Prix England, the Grand Prix Holland, and the San Francisco Pro, I do believe, he won five shows. And that might even be a record. Actually, I think Kevin Lavroni might have won six. But I think Jay Cutler, him and his five wins in one year, that could be a second place, maybe. Yeah. Ronnie King Coleman, I think, has five wins in one year, too. He also would take a few second place finishes, including the uh, Grand Prix Russia to Big King Coleman. And of course... The 2003 Olympia was a very lackluster year for Jay Cutler and Ronnie King Coleman. He basically cheated by using maybe alien genetics. I don't know how he got that big. I don't know. I don't know. Also, another little tidbit of information. Jay Cutler would actually place second in 2003 to Dexter the Blade Jackson at, get this, the show of strength. That's two years in a row for the show of strength where... You know, the, the underdog beat the, the big name. 2004, Jay would scale way back on the amount of times that he competed. He competed eight times 2003. This year, he only competed twice. Once with a big win at that year's Arnold Classic. Another year, another trophy, right? And at the Olympia, he placed second again. But you know what? By 2004, he was chasing Ronnie King Coleman. He was getting closer and closer and by 2005, it was a legitimate race between these two dudes. I mean, these 2005 showdown pitchers between these two guys, this is truly legendary stuff. 2006, the Olympia event, Jay brings an outstanding package. He looked great. One of his best versions, one of his biggest, most conditioned for sure. And an aging Ronnie King Coleman... He showed some weaknesses, for sure. And by the end of the event, Jay Cutler had defeated Ronnie King Coleman to become 
the Mr. Olympia champion for his first time in 2006. Jay would solidify his victory over Ronnie King Coleman at the Grand Prix Austria, Grand Prix Holland, and one more time at the Grand Prix Romania, all in 2006. In 2007, Jay would become a two-time Mr. Olympia champion, but not without controversy. A lot of people think that Victor Martinez is the uncrowned Mr. Olympia champion of 2007, but much like Jay Cutler coming second place in 2001, I guess the controversy was the same, but the shoe was on the other foot this time. 2008, Jay Cutler would return with a slightly improved version, improved from 2007 that is, but it still was not quite as good as he was, say, in 2006. And I think the judges knew that, and with Dexter the Blade Jackson standing across from Jay Cutler, he looked tremendous. It was a fall from grace. Jay Cutler had lost his Mr. Olympia title, and he placed second. So now, it was time to make history. Jay Cutler, like a rising phoenix, stepped onto that 2009 Mr. Olympia stage. It was meant for him. The backdrop, the lighting, the stage itself. 2009, Jay, he defeated the current Mr. Olympia champion in Dexter the Blade Jackson. Unfortunate, uh, unfortunately for Dexter, he didn't even get second. He got third. It was actually an old memesis. As you recall, it was Branch Warren who was uh, staring across the stage. They were the final two. And like I said, like I began this video off with, Jay Cutler had recaptured his Olympia title, becoming the only man before that, and the only man still till today. Nobody has ever done that feat, lose that title, and, and regain it. And if I'm not mistaken, is that not Stone Cold Steve Austin in the background at the 2009 Olympia? Wow. Never realized that. Jay would return to the Olympia stage, of course, 2010 and he would bring the hardware home one last time jay would become a four-time mr olympia champion but that year there was a young man knocking at his heels and it was of course phil heath the following year it was in fact phil heath that would finally defeat jay cutler and end his reign as mr olympia champion this time for good Jay actually showed a lot of poise and respect, and he was a very gracious loser. And actually, if you think about it, he's the only man ever to have lost that title twice. Strangely enough, Jay would actually compete after the Mr. Olympia, doing the duties for Phil Heath once again, placing second to Phil at the 2011 Shiru Classic. Jay did not compete in 2012, but made his return to the bodybuilding stage in 2013. And this was his final Mr. Olympia event. He looked pretty good. He looked okay, guys. Let's, let's give the guy his due. I mean, obviously. He wasn't as, as big. He wasn't as big. I didn't want to be that big. As he was in 2006, obviously you can see the size difference. But we can't be mad at the guy. He brought some excellent condition... And he got top six. He placed sixth at this event. I mean, the guy's wheels were in. He, he never had a distended midsection, things of that nature. So kudos to Jay Cutler. Hold your head up high. And a sixth place, not a bad way to finish off a bodybuilding career. Still till this very day, Jay continues to be an outstanding ambassador for this sport. And he is definitely a guy that all the current pros should look up to. And he's not afraid to, you know, haul the shirt off, haul the pants off, and do a little tiny pose down with some young kids to show them that, you know, Jay Cutler still means business. And this is him, of course, guys, the most recent photo. He's 49, as the, the making of this video. Jay Cutler, 49, obviously feeling fine. Really hope you enjoyed this one, guys, as much as I did setting it up. I learned a lot about Jay Cutler today, so I hope you guys did too. Hit thumbs up, subscribe. Have a good one.